This story is a combination of the second Passion Prophecy and of the conflict story between Jesus and the disciples about how to regard status and how one gets to be a leader, gets to be first. The Passion Prophecy is told in a spirit of factual description. There is no self-pity in this. There is no bitterness or anger at those who will do this. It is simply a statement of fact. The wonder, the lack of understanding of the disciples is told in a way that is wholly sympathetic. They didn't understand what he was saying. And they were afraid to ask him. So this is an inside view of the feelings and responses of the disciples that everyone in the audience could identify with. And that's what you want to do in telling this story, is to make that possible, is for your listeners to join with the disciples in being utterly amazed and of not understanding what it is that Jesus is saying here and why this would be inevitable or necessary in the future. The discussion about their arguing about who is the greatest is at, at the first level funny. Jesus asks them, what were you arguing about on the way? And they are like children you know, who don't want to tell their parents you know, what they had done or what they were talking about. So they don't tell him. Rather, he intuits what it is, but what is described is their embarrassment. And the storyteller is, I think, amused at this. You know, for on the way, they had argued with one another about who was the greatest. So at some level, it's funny. It is also an insight into the disciples uh, that the storyteller gives to them directly. Jesus then responds. Now this is one in a series of stories in which Jesus disagrees with the disciples and teaches them something by demonstrating things. This is not the same level of conflict as was present with the prophecy with Peter's rebuking him or with stories that are coming up later of the exorcist who they rebuke and Jesus is tough on them uh, also when they're bringing the children to him and especially the climax of this kind of stories is the anointing at Bethany in which then uh, apparently Judas was so angry at Jesus' confrontation with them that he went off and betrayed him. So this story is part of that cycle. In this case, Jesus sits down, he calls the 12, and so you want to gather your audience as the 12 around this and probably sit down in order to tell this to them. You may even want to take a child and as you tell the story, but you can also do that in your imagination and, and pick up a child and sit him on your lap and you know, imagine uh, some you know, little child who's part of your family or grandchild or something and, uh, and then uh, take it in your arms and you know, show them. You know, whoever welcomes one such child as this welcomes me and whoever welcomes me welcomes not me but the one who sent me. So it's a very warm, tender, heartwarming story about uh, the kingdom of God and about uh, greatness. And greatness uh, is to welcome a child like this. This is the mandate for children's ministries through all of the centuries. This is the example of what has motivated the teaching of children uh, for these 2,000 years. And in its context, it was a great shock because there are no stories about warmth toward children in the tradition of Israel other than the Shema and the things of 
you know, to teach these things to your children, which are quite warm. And of course, the stories of Abraham and all that. So there's a lot of love of children. But to make this central to uh, the kingdom of God and that the attitude of a child is to be like that of those who will enter the kingdom of God and is the source of greatness. This is a reversal of expectations and a new idea in the tradition of Israel.